Once again, major spoiler alert for Star Wars The Force Awakens, you've been warned. As long as there's light, we have a chance. I know that line isn't necessarily contextual directly to Kylo Ren, but I don't think it's in there by mistake either, especially considering how immediately the tides turn from I want to do good to just kidding, I'll murder my father once the light shining in on that whole encounter is finally fully extinguished. At this point, I think the direction things go with Kylo Ren is the most wide open character progression that we have right now. I think obviously some of that character progression will depend on what we learn about Supreme Leader Snoke throughout the next couple films, but Ren is obviously important to Snoke, and for a relatively raw user of the Force, has already shown some impressive ability. But he is also immature in some ways, being somewhat of a loose cannon who's susceptible to huge outbursts when things don't go his way, also always trying to portray himself as this hardened, badass user of the Force when other people are around, but we also see instances of his inner conflict of the light creeping in on multiple occasions. So the looming question hanging over his character at this point is will Kylo Ren stay evil? Or will he open up to the light that he feels creeping in so often and become an ally to the resistance? My take is that he stays evil, and admittedly, that's also my personal preference. It seems obvious that he doesn't want to let the light in, and being someone of his personality who's susceptible to those outbursts, the dark side seems like a natural fit, because what's the light side equivalent of such an emotional outburst? Nobody's going to lose their shit and go help an old lady carry groceries. I feel like even if he did become good, those outbursts would naturally gravitate him back toward the dark side, because anger would get the best of him, and anger is a path to the dark side. Now, on the the flip side of that during that encounter on the bridge after that last bit of light had been extinguished and darkness overcame the room which was obviously intended to be symbolic kylo ren sparks up his lightsaber murders his father but at no point directly after that necessarily looks happy with himself about it he still looks really deeply conflicted about the finality of what he's just done and before we even see any chance for his emotions to change after that he's shot in the hip by chewy and all the action focuses elsewhere anyway with all those factors considered i personally can foresee five different directions that they might go with kylo ren's character now in the end i could be completely wrong on all of these because with his completed training other characters that might come along throughout the series things could change in drastic ways but as things are and given everything we currently know these are the five different outcomes that i can foresee Kylo Ren turns good in the next movie as remorse over what he's done to his own father haunts him like nothing else has before. He also grows increasingly resentful of Snoke, particularly with the growing criticism of Ren's weakness of allowing the light to creep in, all while Ren vividly remembers that even in his dying moment, his own father had one last endearing gesture toward him a bond he realizes he could never possibly have with Snoke. It's not terribly likely in my book, but with rumors out there of a new villain already being cast for episode 8, it could lend the notion of a new number 2 for Supreme Leader Snoke, possibly with a situation where Snoke tries to strike down Kylo Ren, fails, and in turn, Ren becomes a valuable ally for those willing to do good. Essentially, this is the turn good, stay good theory. Kylo Ren lets the light in to once again become Ben Solo, joining the fight against the First Order, possibly as soon as midway through Episode 8. And despite skepticism about this among the Resistance, the good guys are backed up against a wall so badly that they essentially have no choice but to trust him. But after a brief period of helping the Resistance, he's lured back to the dark side, creating the dark cliffhanger to end the second movie, probably with some kind of major impact betrayal on his way back to the dark side in service of Supreme Leader Snoke. We'll call this the Magneto Theory. Third theory is somewhat like the last one in the sense that Ren lets the light in and becomes good for a brief amount of time, eventually culminating this time in a situation where he and his dark side abilities team up with Rey, who is now trained in the ways of the Jedi for the first ever battle of good and evil versus a greater evil. The two of them bind together briefly and are able to destroy Supreme Leader Snoke, but... Part of what powers them to victory is the anger harnessed by Kylo Ren during this fight, and it corrupts him with power all over again. With Snoke gone and the new allure of being the top dog in the galaxy using the dark side of the Force, Ren turns more evil than ever, stepping into Snoke's vacated role in command of the First Order. We'll call this the Corruption Theory. 
Kylo Ren continues his training and stays loyal to Snoke, but the slight pull of the light along with a new remorse of murdering his own father persists just like it did in The Force Awakens, and eventually we see a scene that is a tense situation involving both Kylo Ren and Snoke, in which Kylo Ren has his judgment clouded by that will to do good. Snoke senses this, and having grown tired of what he perceives to be Ren's greatest weakness, finally strikes him down, essentially in the very way that Han warned of. Ren is evil until his own end and is struck down before he ever has a chance to do good. This is the Han was right theory. <laughs> Lastly is the one that I personally see as the most likely. Coming to grips with the severity of what he has done, Ren really has finally rid himself of every bit of light within him, growing more ruthless and more powerful throughout the final two films, probably involving an overthrow of Supreme Leader Snoke and Kylo Ren taking ruthless control of the First Order. This all builds to a final confrontation at the end of the trilogy, where one character essentially has to make the most painful decision ever. And that character is Leia essentially having to ask of either Rey and or Luke to strike down her own son for the good of the galaxy. This one is called the Sacrifice Theory. Anyway, all of those are just a handful of theories that I have come up with that seem logical, again, given with what we know about the movie and the characters thus far. But, if you have any theories of your own, please feel free to share them. We've already had a ton of great conversation on the other video I did about Ray's origins, and there is so much fun stuff to speculate about. So, if you have any theories, please share them. Happy to discuss them. But as always, everybody, if you like this video, please click the like button. If you want more like it, subscribe, because I'm going to make a few more. And as always, Always, thank you for watching. Hey everyone, thanks again for checking out this video. If you check out the annotations that you see on your screen right now, on the left I have a link to my video discussing Rey's vision from The Force Awakens, as well as some speculation about Rey's origins. And the annotation to the right will take you to a video I did a while back about my five least favorite changes to the original Star Wars trilogy. Thanks again for watching, everybody.